Welcome to today's lesson on scientific measurement. Today we're going to make we're going to take a look at the differences between metrics, what's called also called SI units, and we're going to take a look at English units. We're going to talk the differences, we're going to talk about what we use in science, and that's going to be the major piece of today's lesson. Now, one of the things I always start out talking every year is the 1999 NASA Mars Orbiter crash. NASA lost a $125 million orbiter because there were some differences between the way that NASA programmed and the company that built the orbiter actually built the system. So the engineering department that built the orbiter was based here in the United States and was just a, nat was just a regular engineering company. This company built the orbiter using what are called English units. Those are our inches, miles, those types of units. Now, NASA, being worldwide, uses the metric system, which most scientists do use. Now, when NASA input the metric system into the orbiter to know what, how far to go and, and all those programming pieces, they ended up losing and crashing this orbiter into Mars because they programmed it using centimeters, my, uh, kilometers, and those types of units. So we try to keep everything similar within science. If you're talking to a scientist here from the United States and you're talking to somebody from Germany, you want to be able to talk on the same level. You want to be able to understand the same types of units. So in science, we deal strictly with the metric system. So this year, we will not be using inches, we will not be using miles, we will not be using pounds, we will not be using gallons or cups. What we will be using is the metric system. The major, major measurement of length in the metric system is the meter. With using prefixes, we get the centimeter, we get the millimeter, and we get the kilometer. And we're going to talk about what the differences between each of these are in just a minute. The major mass units are grams, kilograms, milligrams, and then the metric ton. Metric ton being um, 2,000 kilograms. Now, you will notice that we're using mass and not weight. The only place that mass and weight are equivalent to each other is sea level on Earth. Remember, Weight is the measure of gravitational pull on an object. Mass is the amount of matter inside that object. Mass does not change. When I go to Jupiter, my body mass does not change. Unless I were to cut off an arm or a leg, my body mass would not change. So my mass would remain the same. But Jupiter's gravitational pull is much greater than the Earth's. So my weight would increase, increase tremendously if I were to move from here to Jupiter. So my mass would not change, but my weight would. So that's why we use mass. Volume in the metric system, we're going to use liters, milliliters, or centimeters cubed. And we're going to talk about how centimeters cubed can be a, be a measure of volume when centimeters are a measure of length. Temperature. The measurement of temperature in the metric system is degrees Celsius. So we will not be using Fahrenheit, we'll actually be using degrees Celsius. And we'll get to that also. So let's take a look at all the major pieces of the metric system with measurement. Now, here we have a line across the top that deals with the metric measurements. In the middle here in red, I have what's called base. Now base is going to be your base measurement of length, which would be the meter, volume, which would be the liter, mass, which would be the gram, etc. So we're going to keep this as our base. Now as you move away from the base, you get bigger or smaller depending on what units you're using. Now a decimeter is one tenth the size of a meter, a centimeter is one-tenth the size of a decimeter and one-one-hundredth the size of the base. So each 
time we move, each step we move away from the base, we move 10 times bigger or smaller. A kilometer is a thousand times bigger than a meter. Now the length is bigger, which means the number should be smaller, okay? Now, you are going to need to know the major pieces of kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, centi, and milli. And I've given you a mnemonic device here to try to remember those. Kings have diamonds, but diamonds cost money. If you can remember the mnemonic device, hopefully it can help you remember how many steps you have to move when you're when you're transferring your, um, from one unit to the next. Now let's talk about conversions. Because the metric system moves on base unit of 10, every step that you move, you actually only need to move your decimal place. So what does that mean? Well, let's look here at converting centimeters to kilometers. Well, I have 2,563 centimeters. Now if I have my piece here, kings have diamonds, but diamonds cost money, and I want to move from centi to kilo, I need to figure out how many spaces I need to move. Well, my centi is here, and I'm trying to move all the way to kilo. So I'm going deci, base, deca, hecto, kilo. That's five places that I'm trying to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where my decimal place is originally. My decimal place here, is at the end of my three. If I don't have a decimal place, if I don't see a decimal place, it's at the very end of my number. So now I'm gonna look at moving my decimal place five places. This is the direction I'm gonna move it in. Okay, I'm going from centi to kilo. So I'm gonna move my decimal place this way for this one. And I'm gonna move it five places. So when I move it one place, it goes here. Two, it goes here. Three goes here. Four. So to move it a fifth place, I have to add a zero place marker, and it goes before the zero. So my answer here would be, it would be 0 0.02563 kilometers. Now let's try liters to milliliters. If I'm up here, liters is my base. I'm trying to go to milli. So I'm going to move my decimal place add this here for my decimal place. I'm going to move my decimal place to the right because I'm moving from base to milli. And I'm going to take my decimal place and move it one, two, three places. So if my decimal place is here, I'm going to move it one, two, three places. I'm going to have to add a zero place marker here, which gives me 50 milliliters. Now for the final one. If I'm moving from centi, centi to meters, I'm going from centi to my base. So I'm going to move my decimal place to the left. And I'm going two places, centi to deci, deci to base. So I'm going to move it two places. So if my decimal place is here at the end, I'm going to move it one, two. And my number now becomes 95.22. Metrics are much easier to use than the English system. So, in science class, we're using the metric system. It's on a base of 10. Conversions are much easier, and we can figure out our conversions pretty easily. I hope that this helps you understand the metric system. I hope my NASA story helps you understand why we want to use the metric system and have a similar unit throughout all scientists in the world. And I hope this really does help you understand the metric system and conversions.